Hey everyone, thanks for joining me on today's video on Acromantia mucinilfa. Um, a huge buzzword I think now in the nutrition space and community as it's gaining more traction for good reason. And we're definitely going to uncover why. Of course, what the heck it is. So if you're watching this, I'm sure you are looking for the answer to the age old question of how do I achieve optimal gut health? What does a healthy gut look like? And this is, these are super important questions and things I've been asking myself for the past 10 years from when my nutrition journey began. And, uh, you know, I've tried a lot of things in the past, uh, fad diets looking to cure my guts, and fortunately, nothing worked up until this point. Um, but typically, what we are going for is tightening up the gut and strengthening the gut lining, right? And, and the reason this becomes number one is because the gut mucus layer is your first point of contact from the outside world. You know, aside from your mouth, of course, as food goes down, it's gonna come directly in contact with that gut mucus layer. And if that gut mucus layer is weak, then unfortunately, this is when things start to go wrong, okay? So what acromantia does is it strengthens the gut mucus lining. It makes your gut mucus lining strong. And unfortunately, if we don't have high populations of acromantia, it becomes more permeable. We have more leaks in the foundation and more cracks. So things can be starting to seep through, right? And this is where we start to see a lot of issue. So for example, if we have done, if we were like a C-section baby, if you've done a lot of antibiotics, maybe you suffer from severe IBS and prolonged inflammation, uh, any of the above, typically what's happening is we can, you know, honestly assure that we have low populations of bifido and low populations of acromantia. Okay. And if this is the case, our gut mucosal lining is compromised. It's really weak. So what happens is bad bacteria in the gut will start to secrete what's called lipopolysaccharide. LPS is an endotoxin that gets produced by the bad bacteria. LPS works to fire through and break through the cracks of the gut mucosal layer and the gut lining. And what happens is LPS is going to start wreaking havoc on everything else. So our body's backup system for this is to get our immune cells, our macrophages, okay? And macrophages will come in the inflammatory state, okay? So they're gonna try to come over and kill LPS, and now they're diverted from their already other important tasks at keeping you healthy. Now they're coming over to the gut lining to control lipopolysaccharide, and as lipopolysaccharide is, is wreaking havoc, macrophages can't do it alone, so they're calling in for help, and they end up actually signifying and in, in signaling these cytokines, these inflammatory cytokines, uh, more specifically called interleukin-6, interleukin-1b, and also tumor necrosis factor alpha. So Crohn's is characterized by a rise in TNFA. Colitis is characterized by a rise in interleukin-6. Okay, so we're actually just causing all of these issues, a plethora of issues through this inflammatory cytokine kind of cascade. And these things can also relocate into our fat mass, into our brain, causing brain fog, neurodegenerative diseases, um, you know, causing insulin resistance. So there's just so many things, um, just a huge chain of events that we want to undo. Okay, so we want a tight gut lining. And that's what acromantia's job is. It tightens the gut mucosal lining and it reduces the surface area of the gut. And by doing so, you actually absorb less calories. So this is why, uh, you know, acromantia promotes lean body mass. So if you ever know an individual, uh, which is quite frustrating by the way, if someone who can just eat whatever they want and not gain an ounce, um, typically this is high populations of bifido and acromantia. And if you deplete their acromantia mucinofa populations, they would more than likely gain weight immediately. So again, we're reducing our caloric load, we're closing the gut, we're tightening the gut in general. So acromantia is super, super important to focus on, okay? So how do we feed it, right? And, and if you Google this, you're gonna see, you know, various fruits and vegetables, of course, and I'm sure they'll feed acromantia in small amounts, but it's, it's, it's not the, best way. And the best way is actually going to be through apple peels. So it sounds strange, right? It's, it's, you know, you're peeling apples. Um, you know, when I first started actually doing this acromantia protocol, I was peeling 
I had like 30 apples just flying around the kitchen. I had no idea what to do with them, right? So it, it depends on which way works best for you. You can absolutely supplement an apple peel powder, which is less messy. I find it's a, even sometimes a bit more inexpensive than buying pounds of apples. So find which one way, you know, works best for you. Um, but ultimately the reason it works is because the pectin fiber in apple skins interacts very differently and very well, I would say, with the polyphenols present in those skins. So the polyphenol that's present in apple skins, they're called polymerized procyanidins, and they're extremely tough. They're really, really strong. Um, and they've been measured actually at about 30,000 Daltons in terms of units of strength. And the typical polyphenol averages around like 100, 200, the next best, right, in, in terms of Daltons. So you're looking at, you know, just massive difference in terms of the strength uh, and toughness of these polyphenols. And what that means is it's going to completely resist digestion. So as these highly polymerized procyanidins travel through the gut, they resist digestion, they actually stop and in, in enter the cecum. And as they do this, they are fermenting. As they ferment, they release eight times more acromantia than any other food source around. Okay, so this is super important. This gets to actually where gut health all began. It began in infancy. And it began with two things. It began with substrate, our fiber. So hence the apple peels, for example, we can use now. Uh, and it began with just immunity, immune cells. Okay, and then you can see human milk oligosaccharides, breast milk, um, HMOs, right? This is a great bifidobacteria, uh, an immune cell proliferator. Okay, so Realistically, when we look at other ways to feed acromantia, you know, there is uh, something on the market called pendulum. Personally, I've not tried pendulum before. And a big reason um, is because it is considered a probiotic. I prefer the prebiotics uh, from the nutraceuticals and the fibers itself. I think they just do a way better job at transferring into the colon and feeding resident bacteria better than a capsule. Um, that we can't really guarantee where it opens up and lands in the colon, right? So if it doesn't land in the colon, if it lands in the small intestine, uh, we can start to form things like small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, SIBO, right? So we've got to be careful. Um, but another big reason too I haven't tried it is because it's, I think for 30 capsules, it's like 215 American and located in Canada, that is just way out of a price range for something you probably need to buy a few bottles of. Um, so that's probably my biggest bone to pick with Pendulum. If it if you're doing it and it works, awesome, right? We can definitely implement more acromantia strategies, especially with the apple peels. Um, but however, for this case, again, we're just using something that is very cost-effective, very simple, uh, and tastes pretty good when you put it into a smoothie. So honestly, with, with this, we have to also look at bifidobacteria. Um, bifidobacteria is the next, it's, it's a huge player in the gut, and it's unavoidable when we look at gut health. Okay. and understanding the gut mucosal lining. So if we look at, say, human milk oligosaccharides, one third of breast milk is comprised of these sugars. What they are, they're long chain sugars that are bound to a single protein, which are called glycans. Glycans are also called mucins. And in a mucin, these glycans, they will bind to various pathogens and viruses like E. coli, for example, and kill them off and keep you safe, keep the baby safe, for example. But a cool thing is that the main strain we utilize of HMOs is called 2-fucosal lactose. 2-fucosal lactose will directly feed and turn on genes in the gut that will produce more mucins. So this is actually a really, really cool effect. So not only feeding bifidobacteria directly, it is also feeding a certain gene that turns on a protein. And this gene is called 2-fucosal transferase, located in our gut lining. This 2-fucosal transferase will produce more mucins. These mucins will keep the gut lining super strong. And if it's strong, nothing can come and penetrate it. Now, this is where it gets even more interesting. In terms of its relationship with acromantia, well, acromantia, when it's high in populations, it feeds off of mucins. So it needs to eat those mucins that typically keep the gut lining strong. So, well, how could that be? Right? So it's, it's a synergistic relationship. We'll keep acromantia high in populated. Bifidobacteria keeps the gut mucosa lining strong. Acromantia will feed off those mucins. And in doing so, 
they produce the metabolite called butyrate, the short chain fatty acid. Okay, so now, now we have high populations of acromancy and bifidobacteria. The gut lining is super strong. Nothing can penetrate it, no LPS, no inflammatory signals. And then from here, we're actually producing high amounts of butyrate and probably the right amounts that our body needs. So big thing, you know, if we're having problem digesting foods, uh, digesting fibers, a lot of times this can mean impaired butyrate transport. So by actively feeding acromantia and feeding bifidobacteria, which is two very simple things uh, that are very cost-effective, can put you miles ahead and be um, 